Aloha YouTube, this is Kai Turner. Today I'm gonna to explain what machine learning is. Let's get started. So yesterday I made this video on how to clone any voice using an algorithm in Python. And my girl was next to me and she watched the video and she said, how is the algorithm figuring out how to clone these voices? And what's generation, what does that mean? So essentially I said, you know what? I'm going to make a video on this and explain how machine learning works in order to basically obtain and do any task that you assign it to through software development. Let's take note of how the early generations differ from the later generations. As you can hear in the earlier generations, the voice is very muffled and you can barely tell what the clone is trying to say. Let's take a listen. Now, as we can tell, that was basically unintelligible speech. But by later generations, such as generation five and six, the speech becomes very, very clear to the point where the clone is almost at the actual level of synthesization of the actual original source material. Let's take a listen. There are many amazing things, technology. Pretty amazing, right? This conceptually shows us that machine learning gets better as it progresses and understands what it's trying to emulate. A really great example of that is this guy right here, Samuel Arts, and essentially he shows the different progression through the generations as the AI is actually adjusting and learning from its mistakes. Now, as you can see, each generation, it learns, oh, okay, well, I crash into this wall, let me go the other way. Well, I crash into this wall, let me go another way. Giving us a deep understanding of how complex and harmonious AI can be when it's using machine learning to identify what it's accomplishing and what it's trying to do. On YouTube, there are so many creators that show different creators and how they progress throughout the space of machine learning. One of the best ones that I've seen is this guy named Code Bullet, which essentially makes different games and interactables to illustrate how AI can really, really like get to the point where it can do anything by just learning. And to watch some of these videos, it, it's it's insane. You know what I mean? Like this AI that can like make 300 clicks every second and, you know, how it can train itself to walk. It's beaten games. It's even learned how to play chess and things of that nature that he built from scratch. Like there's engines out there for chess that can be literally the best players in the world. So it's just amazing to see how machine learning has progressed throughout the ages. But let's say you want to build an algorithm and you want it to, let's say, recognize a cat. This is a super popular example for machine learning because it's essentially a perfect case scenario of which case the AI can train itself to become better and better at it. So the steps you're going to need to take is you want it to know what it's trying to do. So you have to teach the computer, well, what is a cat? Because there's so many different species and varieties of cats that a computer doesn't know this. It only identifies what you tell it. So you have to say, okay, this is a cat. Also, this is a cat. And this is a cat. Now, just a myriad of different features and traits of these three cats would confuse any baby who you explain this concept to that all three of these are the same animal but see to computer it only sees things as black and white ones and zeros so with enough data you can literally tell it about anything and in the case of cats you show it thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures of cats until the point where it's seen them at different angles it's seen them in different lighting and it understands the values that cats have and Obviously, as computers are, they remove outliers. So outliers means anything that falls outside of the thing. If there's a really, really unique looking cat that looks like a dog, it'll remove these just to help itself to understand what you're trying to make it do. And also, it tries to understand the different estimated values. So in terms of like a pie chart or a graph, you would see something that looks more akin to this. Red lines being losses, blue lines being estimated values. To keep this in simple terms, computers try to basically assume that the average looking cat is the cat that it's looking for. And anything 
that strays away from that, it may flag it as not a cat. Because your only objective at this point is to identify, is it a cat or is it not a cat? And this gets into very complex circles. I'm going to explain more about that. Okay, training an algorithm is like finding the average score in a test that you took in college, right? Because some students are going to score high and some students are going to score low. But the average is going to follow the same curve as always, right? It's that like it's that unique, you know, palabra, that slope that just follows this this almost perfect line. And that's essentially how computers can see what the deviation is of what it's trying to do and what you have given it to practice from. And after it basically practices over and over and over, it gets these data stats. It understands the points in which case that the uh, the target is from the source material. And it kind of equates that into a nice complex graph. That's machine learning in a nutshell. Getting the graph understanding where the point is that it's trying to identify versus what it is shown. Which is kind of why you see machines tend to learn more and more the more times it tries and fails. Because each time it fails, you can correct the system and adjust for the deviation of that. Versus the first time, it's basically like a baby. It's just going out there willy-nilly and trying to figure out what what am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? You're probably wondering, how does this impact my everyday life? Well, Elite Data Science has the answer for you. And one of the main ways is, as we said before, intelligent gaming. Essentially, since machines are learning from the data set you provide and adjusting the weights um, accordingly to accommodate for whatever task you assign it to do, it can essentially be the perfect gamer. And task speed runs are quite a thing of yesteryear and they still continue today, where basically you, you train a machine to play a game perfectly, frame by frame, and make it so that it does it flawlessly. Also, computers, as I said earlier, have had engines like uh, Google's DeepMind and so many like lead chess you have um stockfish stockfish new which are actually better than the highest ranked chess players in the world so machine learning can get to the point where it can do literally anything another great example is obviously self-driving cars you probably heard of a little company called tesla right well guess what tesla has a very exclusive feature called full self-driving which essentially will allow you in the future to completely relinquish your power to the car and it drives itself. I mean, completely drives itself. I know it sounds crazy and a lot of people are like, oh no, I can't do that. But think of the luxury of being able to just sit back and maybe multitask, you know, maybe get some work done, get a quick nap in there while your car drives you directly to its destination. So a great video by DMAC Tech shows that this is one of the coolest features ever. The car is identifying each of the other cars on the road, different people, different stop signs, even the little subtle nuances like the, the way that the, uh, the curb is displaced, the different trees in the background. It sees everything. Now, even though it doesn't display everything that it's showing, it's showing even more detail than it's even seeing. And that's what machine learning is allowing it to do, to process all the material within the realm of the environment and to showcase this to the user while also retaining some of the information so that it gets better over time. So each person that's using full self-driving along with autonomous driving is actually helping out the Tesla ecosystem by improving it slowly over time. Because each time that it makes a mistake and you take over, it gets a little bit better and understands, oh, okay, I shouldn't have done that. I'll, un I'll do it better next time. And by thousands and thousands of examples like this being shown, over time, it will become the best driver by far. That's where the power of machine learning AI comes into full effect. 
Another form of technology is cyborg technology, where augmented reality and virtual reality are going to merge together with machine learning. And this is one of the big areas where I feel like the future is really going to adjust to it. I have a new video coming out pretty soon, and I'm going to talk about this issue. But essentially, you'll be able to even like bring back people from the dead and even like interact with people in a virtual environment that you aren't in. You know, you could be in Paris and interact with somebody in Paris and you're not in Paris. So like it's almost like an episode of Black Mirror in terms of what is possible with machine learning AI. Really going to get into that in a future video. Be, be soon. Hit the subscribe button. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's going to be an amazing video when I when I finally put that out there. Um, obviously, this is a really, really big talking point, which is it's taken over dangerous jobs. And some would even say it's taken over normal jobs because think about things like McDonald's, for instance, right? Even in Norway and especially like in, I'd say, wealthier neighborhoods, you notice that there's now just machines there and the machines do all the work. It's basically taking the job of the cashier. You pick your order, you can customize exactly how you want it, and you pay all via the machine. Nice, easy, seamless. Well, if that's doing the job of a cashier, then why would McDonald's pay a cashier? Essentially, a robot could do it way better. And it's way easier, right? You don't have the anxiety of talking to another person. So taking away dangerous jobs is one thing, you know, like, oh, welding or maybe, you know, high impact, high uh, skyscraper type, you know, mechanic tree you know the the architecture of all that stuff that's the type of jobs that you're like well maybe a, a, a robot should handle that you know but with the less strenuous jobs like you know maybe being a, a greeter cashier things like that the personalization of the whole aspect of machines versus humans and the dichotomy between the two is going to get really merged in the next i'd say decade and it's very scary to see what's going to come about that because i mean i'm a tech lover but let's be honest companies like tesla and mcdonald's have already proven that they don't really need humans in terms of employees because they can just have machines do all the work maybe you need one or two you know maybe they need a manager in mcdonald's maybe a security guard in mcdonald's but aside from that what else do you need and in terms of tesla i mean they're they have already have entire departments dedicated to just robotics. So it's just going to be an interesting future with um, machine learning. And that's why it has positives and it has negatives. I'm going to talk about both. I'm not going to be completely biased on one and say, oh, machine learning is the best thing ever. No, it has positives and it has negatives. And here's a big positive because IBM has been working on this for a long time. I look at it. I even knew it before I even before even reading this where Let's say for certain issues, you can't have all the knowledge in terms of environmental protection. So let's get into it. There's a video from Steve Mould that essentially identifies um, a disbursement agent who completely tells about how to, you know, limit the spread of coronavirus within an environment like a hospital. And he shows the whole dynamic and the dichotomy of how the air is going to get displaced throughout the air and how you can open just a few windows in certain corridors in order to displace the air. And this is a great representation using AI to understand what's an easy solution for a complex problem. And when you can use science to essentially develop machine learning to identify the patterns of which case, let's say a virus or a contaminant is spread, it's very easy to identify how to solve these. And in some cases, we can even use machine learning to see things that would otherwise be very difficult for a human to see and or identify quickly, such as viruses. Wired actually had an article where they showed how machine learning can actually identify different malignant cancers and tumors throughout the body, just showing the algorithm pictures of said tumors, it could actually identify with very high precision what the rate was that this person actually had this type of cancer. 
just showing it pictures over and over repetitively of the different types of cancer. This shows how it can adapt over time and actually help us in even the medical field. Predictive models are also great at showing the big picture and how that the algorithm can detect the small changes throughout time and or distance and or space. The last point I'll touch on in terms of machine learning is how we can even use these adaptive models to identify the best companion for certain people. And different regions have adapted different protocols for this and different regulations for this. But definitely in the next couple of decades when robots, especially uh, more of the sexual variety, become more prominent in our society and our culture and it becomes more normal and not so taboo, I could definitely see that machines will even replace certain humans in terms of companionship. And this might sound crazy to certain people, just like cell phones sounded crazy in the 60s. But just trust what I'm saying when I say that if augmented reality and different uh, machines can learn your patterns and behaviors and what you like and your, your traits... It's not too far-fetched to say that they could adapt this into literally anything and to making the perfect person for you even, if that makes any sense. If you want to know more about machine learning and all of the things that I've discussed in this video, the links will be in the description below. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe to this video. And as always, have an awesome day. Peace.